Welcome to another session of batteries. Today we'll understand about lead acid storage battery. Before we move on, subscribe for more such informative videos and tap the like button if you like the video and share the video with your friends. First, let us understand the difference between electrochemical and electrolytic cell. In an electrochemical cell, the chemicals present inside the battery undergoes chemical reaction to give us electricity. That is chemical energy is getting converted to electrical energy. And in an electrolytic cell, when we pass electric electricity, the chemicals present inside the battery undergoes chemical reaction and electrical energy is getting converted to chemical energy. And if you look at the basic classification of batteries, it is classified as primary and secondary batteries. In a primary battery, we can use it only once, that is it is not rechargeable. So as long as the chemicals are present inside the battery, it undergoes chemical reaction to give us electricity. Once it gets exhausted, we throw it off. The dry cell and alkaline cell are examples of these. And secondary cell is a rechargeable battery and it can be charged and discharged for many cycles. And the cell reactions which are taking place during discharging cycle are reversed back by passing electricity during charging cycle. So it acts both as an electrochemical cell and electrolytic cell. And examples are nickel cadmium battery and lead acid battery. Today we are going to look into lead acid battery which is the secondary battery type. First, let us understand the construction of lead acid battery. Here, we have six cells connected in series. Each cell contributes for 2.1 volts. So overall, we have 12 volts from this battery. And because six cells are connected in series, we call it as a battery. And we have six anodes and six cathodes. The red ones are represented as anodes and blue ones are represented as cathode. And six anodes, that is lead, are take, connected together and a single lead comes out and we have a negative terminal and six lead dioxide cathodes are connected together and taken out as a single lead and that is the positive terminal of our battery. And the electrolyte here is 21% sulfuric acid, that is 21 ml of concentrated sulfuric acid and 79 ml of water will be present in this electrolyte. And this is the construction of our battery and the commercial batteries look this way. The same thing is represented here. Anode is lead, cathode is lead dioxide and electrolyte is 21% sulfuric acid and cell voltage is 12 volts, 6 into 2. Now we'll understand what happens during a discharging cycle. That is when we are using the battery, we are going to get electricity. How we get the electricity? At anode, always oxidation occurs and at cathode, always reduction occurs. When we say oxidation, it releases electrons to undergo oxidation. So the lead which is the anode undergoes oxidation to form Pb2 plus to release two electrons. This Pb2 plus combines with sulfate ions which is present in the sulfuric acid to form lead sulfate. Lead sulfate is a salt which surrounds around the electrode. So the overall anodic reaction is Pb2 plus Pb2 plus gets cancelled. Pb plus sulfate ions forms PbSO4 plus 2 electrons. At cathode, lead dioxide is our cathode plus 4 H plus. This is again coming from the sulfuric acid. It gains electrons because reduction occurs at cathode. So plus 2 electrons forms Pb2 plus plus water. And Pb2 plus again reacts with sulfate ions which again comes from sulfuric acid forming PbSO4. Here you should understand that the second reaction of both anode and cathode are same. Now we look into the overall cathodic reaction PbO2 plus 4H plus Pb2 plus Pb2 plus gets cancelled. So sulfate ions plus 2 electrons forms PbSO4 plus water. This is our overall cathodic reaction. Now coming to the net reaction of the cell, we'll be looking into the net reactions of anode and cathode Pb plus PbO2 plus 4H plus sulfate ions here as well as here we have both anode and cathode. So two sulfate ions forms 
PBSO4 is formed both at anode and cathode. So, 2 PBSO4 plus 2 H2O. Here we don't have electrons because at anode it is on the right hand side and at cathode it is on the left hand side. So, the electrons formed at anode are consumed at cathode. So, in the net reaction we will not have any electrons. This is our net reaction. This is the discharging cycle when it is acting as an electrochemical set. Now, when it is recharged, that is charging cycle, all the reactions are reversed and the anode acts as cathode and cathode acts as the anode. We will understand it better. That is, you, here you can see that at anode, Pb plus SO4 2 minus is forming Pb SO4 plus 2 electrons. This reaction will be reversed. That is, the right hand side will go to left hand side and left hand side comes to right hand side. You can see here that PbSO4 plus 2 electrons forms Pb plus SO4 2 minus. Here it is gaining electrons. So, our anode which is in a lead discharging cycle acts as cathode during the charging cycle because at cathode always reduction occurs, at anode always oxidation occurs. So, at anode again you can see at the cathodic reaction all what is there in the right hand side comes to the left and left hand side goes to the right. So, you can see here that PbSO4 plus water forms PbO2 plus 4H plus plus sulphate ions plus electrons. So, electrons are released. So, a cathode in the discharging cycle is acting as an anode in the charging cycle. So, the net reaction once again gets reversed. So, all which is in the right hand side goes to the left and left comes to the right. So, PbSO4 plus water forms Pb plus PbO2 plus 4H plus plus sulphate ions. Now, you can see that the lead sulphate which is formed around the electrodes are getting reversed back to lead and lead dioxide during the charging cycle. Then again, this electrodes that these electrodes that is lead and lead dioxide are ready for giving us electricity. This is how a secondary battery acts both as an electrochemical and electrolytic cell. In this cycle, it is acting as an electrolytic cell. So, it can work for many charging and discharging cycles. This is the working of a lead acid battery. We look into the advantages of lead acid battery. It is a rechargeable cell. We all know the most important advantage is if it is used for heavy duty applications. That is whenever we require more electricity, we definitely go for lead acid battery. That is why we call it as lead acid storage battery. Because we are using acid as an electrolyte, it is called as lead acid. Lead is our electrodes, base of our electrodes. So, lead acid because the electrolyte is acid and it stores more electricity. So, we call it as lead acid storage battery. And the cell voltage is constant for many cycles of charging and discharging. For example, when you are using this lead acid battery for an inverter at home, you can see that we use it for 5 years, 6 years. Still, the uh, condition of the battery will be good. That, that is because the cell voltage is remaining constant. That is, the 12 volts will remain constant for many charging and discharging cycle. We saw that this is the major drawback in your dry cell and alkaline cell. If you haven't watched those videos, you can watch the dry cell and alkaline uh, cell and the link is at the top. Disadvantages, the main disadvantages is the large size and heavy. That is, I cannot have it in my pocket and travel. I need to carry it. But in general, the size of the battery again differs depending on the applications. You will see that the at home, I am just speaking about the applications at home. You will have a two wheeler, you will have an UPS. If you have a PC, you will definitely have a UPS at home so that the computer does not shut down on its own during power shutdown. So, in UPS and two wheelers, you will see that the lead acid battery is very small in size. Whereas, in your car or an inverter, support for the inverter, the battery is larger in size. The same uh, battery can be used for a truck, bus, for any type of automobile. The size differs depending on the uh, application. Why the size differs is the voltage is going to be 12 volts for all the sizes, but the, depending on the current required, we the size is bigger. This is the main thing about the lead acid battery. Here, we for two things to maintain 
the lead acid battery and prolong the life of the lead acid battery. If you look at, you will have two varieties of batteries available in the market. One they will be saying that it is having zero maintenance batteries are available. But the life of that battery, they will give us many type of advertisements saying that if the battery uh, is given back in two years, you will have... Uh, 25% discount if it is returned in one year you will have full replacement of the battery with 50% discount and all this the reason is we are not going to maintain that battery and for the time specified by the supplier that is if he says three years after three years immediately after three years the battery will be dead but you will be having the batteries available like this which can be maintained by us that is you will have some six knobs for six cells and you can adjust it what adjustment you are going to make if you look at we said that the electrolyte present in the battery is 21 percent sulfuric acid that is 79 percent is water present in it but water can be evaporated easily so during a long usage you will see that water can slowly evaporate and the concentration of sulfuric acid becomes higher to avoid that, what we do is once in six months, you can open these knobs, you will be given a probe and there will be two lines, green mark and red mark. That is, if the water, that level of sulfuric acid is nearing the red mark, it indicates that the water level is less, that is the sulfuric acid is concentrate, concentrated. So, to maintain it what we do is we should buy distilled water present in the market you should never add tap water or ro water present in at home so you should add little amount of distilled water and see that it does not cross the green mark it does not uh, it, uh, it is not less than the red mark that is it should be between the red and green mark because if it crosses the green mark you are diluting the sulfuric acid too much if it is less than the red mark it means that it is highly concentrated and the electrons cannot move freely i'll tell why so this way you can maintain the battery once in six months and you can prolong the life of the battery which works for three years you can even prolong it up to five to six years this is how you can maintain the battery at home another issue with this lead acid battery is during winters you will see that you will have starting trouble in your two wheelers and cars generally it does not start immediately with one kick the reason is the viscosity of sulfuric acid increases during winter that is we all know the viscosity of any liquid decreases with temperature so in winters the temperature will be very low and the viscosity of sulfuric acid will be higher so because of this the electron flow during the cell reaction will not be that easy it will be disrupted so what we generally do is we start the vehicle we warm up the vehicle for two or three minutes then the viscosity of sulfuric acid in decreases and you start the vehicle these are some of the issues with uh, lead acid storage battery now we'll look into the applications wherever you require high storage current you can go for lead acid batteries you can see that if any computer lab will be supported with an ups room and if you open that room you'll see that you will have an ups here and many batteries that is a stack of batteries nearly even 50 to 100 battery lead acid batteries will be there to store energy this is mainly to avoid the shutdown of the computers in the computer lab during power shutdown so this is not only for a computer lab it can be used anywhere you require power backup that is it can be used this is what we saw in all your automobiles starting from your two-wheeler to a truck you can use gas engine ignition in automobiles telephone exchangers railway trains mines laboratories hospitals broadcasting stations power stations distribution work that is in case you are having solar panels at home even there uh, the solar energy is available in the daytime but we'll be requiring electricity in the night times 
also so what we generally do is we'll have lead acid battery where the solar energy gets converted to electrical energy and we store that electrical energy in lead acid batteries and then use it when solar energy is not available to us you we can use again this current from the lead acid battery for such applications also lead acid battery can be used and this is all for this session let us meet in another session until then bye bye thank you